Okay, the time being seven o'clock on February 17th, I'll set the uh, meeting of the Auction Board of Selectmen. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which is General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order concerning imposition on strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. Meetings in the town of Oxford are being conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access, access the proceedings as provided for in the order. And I would like to take attendance. So we'll start with Selectman Triano. Present. Selectman LeBlanc. You're muted. Present. Thank you. Uh, Selectman Daniels is absent. Selectman Sad is absent. I am Selectman Lamash. I am present. And uh, town manager Jen Callahan is present. Um, I lost the paper. Excuse me. Um, before we get started, I would ask for a uh, moment of silence and prayer for three individuals who have passed since our last meeting. The first one is Olive Lucy Prunia, and she served on the, in the town of Oxford, volunteering on the downtown beautification committee from 2000 through 2014. She was also a member of the Cultural Council from the year 2004 to 2010. She passed away peacefully at the wonderful age of 101. The next person is Robert Edmund St. George, better known as Bob, and he was a member of the Historical Commission from 2007 to 2010. And he also passed away on January 19th at home surrounded by his family. The third person is John J. Tag. And John was part of the Townland Study and a member at large from the year 1974 to 1976. He passed away on January 30th. So if you just take a moment to remember them, please. Thank you. First item on our agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes, uh, which was executive session minutes on January 20th. I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Make that motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comments? I call for a vote. Yes. Yes. And I'll vote yes. Three in affirmative, two are absent. Those minutes are approved. The next item is a uh, warrant for the animal control office, offices. It's that time of year where we need uh, to uh, allow Kathleen Flynn and Edward Hart to uh, perform their duties. Uh, outlined in Chapter 140, Section 137 of the Mass General Laws. Um, and this has to be done by April. So I would entertain a motion to approve uh, the chairman to sign the warrants for our animal control officers, Kathleen Flynn and Ed Hart. And make that motion. I second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Then I'll call for a vote. Yes. Yes. And I'll vote yes. That's three in affirmative, two absence. Thank you very much. Um, all right. The next item is I'll refer to the town manager as a uh, donation for the Oxford Community Center. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and through you to the members this evening. Um, this is uh, a request coming from the Oxford Community Center, uh, our uh, uh, 
interim director, Shelley Lambert, uh, had indicated that there was a member who um, had actually already paid for some fitness classes and wasn't able to continue with it and wanted to donate um, that as a credit um, to the Oxford Senior, uh, ox, excuse me, Oxford Community Center. And so based on uh, chapter 44, section 53, it would be um, the Board of Selectmen's uh, responsibility to accept that donation of $70 to the OCC. Thank you very much. So I'd entertain a motion to accept that donation. Make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? Concern? Great. A call for a vote. Yes. Yes. And I'll vote yes. That's three in affirmative, two absent. We gladly accept them and thank them. Moving right along. Next item is our town manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first item is a request that's coming from the Lions Club uh, to the board uh, to actually use the bandstand and Jocelyn Park on two occasions. One would be the um, Saturday um, coming up on February 27th. They would like to be able from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, to host a food collection, a uh, food drive. Um, the second is on Saturday, April 3rd from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, for the Easter Bunny. Now, I recommend approval that would be conditional upon approval from either the Director of Public Health or the Board of Health. Um, they have been compliant uh, with the recommendations for uh, COVID uh, safety, uh, and I see no problem in making that recommendation to the board um, that it be conditional with their approval because they can get into whatever other details there might be. I'd entertain a motion to approve this request. I would make a motion to approve the request conditional upon formal approval from the DPH or Board of Health. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? Then I will call for a vote. Yes. Yes. And I'll vote yes. Three in affirmative, two absent. They are approved. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is just to keep the board um, apprised. I know many of you understood that um, we've taken the vaccination um, efforts that are uh, being undertaken across the state for COVID very seriously. Uh, working with the Board of Health Chairwoman, uh, Kerry Singer, myself, and our new Director of Public Health, we did on Wednesday, February 10th, um, host um, in collaboration with um, a local medical provider at the Webster Medical Center a Oxford-only um, actual vaccine um, clinic. And uh, last week, we had 136 Oxford residents age 75 and older that were vaccinated. And we hosted an additional one um, today uh, where we have vaccinated another 140. Uh, we had sent out a mailer from my office uh, to 822 residents age 75 and older. And we also... Um, did a, um, a code red uh, reverse call to make sure that those residents, um, after we had the ice storm, had uh, been able to either get to the post office or actually get to their mailboxes. So those bookings came in. I, I do want to stress that uh, Laura Wilson in the um, Senior Center has been fantastic in collaborating with uh, our new uh, director for public health, Allie. Novak and um, Laureen Gilbert and Mary Herridge and actually a whole number of other uh, employees who um, on different occasions between the two clinics actually um, did uh, help to volunteer in one capacity or another. And we really couldn't have done this without the real full cooperation of running two vans uh, for senior transportation. So I just I want to uh, let everyone know that uh, I think that we did a great, great job and it's to be commended because I think we've taken a great approach to trying to deal with the pandemic. Having said that, late today, <laughs> this afternoon after we were concluding our clinic, uh, Governor Baker announced that residents age 65 and older with two comorbidities or medical conditions, uh, including things like asthma and other um, uh, conditions will be able to book vaccinations uh, beginning on Thursday. Um, needless to say, because we did all of this outreach, um, we were just really pummeled with telephone calls this afternoon, the minute that got reported out. Uh, what we're doing is we're going to continue to take information until we actually know what we're going to do with that. Um, there is a very large vaccination 
uh, host site uh, at Worcester State College uh, for those people who can get there. And um, we don't have the resources to do a huge mass inoculation here, nor, nor do we have um, the medical center's cooperation right now to do something like that. We have to first and foremost make sure that those almost 300 residents who are seniors, 75 and older, will get their second shot. And um, there is a problem with the moving of vaccine across the state. There's no doubt about it. We have a lot of places that have uh, people you know, registering and waiting uh, to get their vaccine, uh, but yet there hasn't been enough vaccine product going across the state. So, but we will, I mean, if we can do something, uh, we will try to do it, uh, but we wanna make sure that we at least finish off what we started. And that's gonna be our priority, the seniors 75 and older. Um, having said that, I also wanted to um, alert the board that we're in the budget season and the, the budget presentation by department heads to the finance committee are upcoming. They're going to be starting to be scheduled February 24th, March 3rd, March 24th, and, and March 31st. Um, of course, the board of selectmen members are invited to attend by the Zoom and um, in here, department heads advocate uh, for their priorities. Additionally, I will be delivering um, the formal uh, finalized uh, budget of fiscal year 22 um, at your March 16th meeting. And um, in advance of that budget presentation, I'm you know, hoping to also pull together um, overall trends related uh, to our fiscal history um, into that presentation. Uh, the next item is just to alert Mr. you that- Chair, sorry. Yes. Sorry, Mr. Chair, through you to the town manager, if that's okay. Sure. Yes, Megan. Um, just on the budget thing, thank you for starting so soon and being proactive on the budget. Would it be possible to make sure that the board is sent the Zoom meeting links and the times of the meeting so that if we wanted to attend them, we can plan accordingly for our schedules, please? Absolutely. I'd be more than happy to do that. Thank you. Um, and thank you for interrupting that. Um, I do appreciate knowing that in advance and we can make sure that you have um, all of those links. Uh, the next item is just to let the board know that um, the uh, police chief uh, has been in touch with my office and wanted to uh, make sure I communicated to the board that um, even though in 2019, we had enacted that civil printing by fingerprinting, excuse me, civil fingerprinting bylaw at the annual town meeting, um, it's been kind of put into abeyance um, because uh, there was vetting that needed to be done on a number of levels, including the AG's office and looking at the um, actual bylaw, uh, but most importantly, also the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation or the FBI. We recently have been informed uh, that those uh, vetting processes and approvals have been done. Um, and Chief Sad has been working with both the FBI and legal counsel on the next steps for implementation. At a meeting last week, he explained uh, that the department was close uh, to being able to start a process and the policy would be presented to the Board of Selectmen for adoption at a meeting in the near future. So just letting you know that this is coming. Um, as you know, a lot of it was targeted towards um, looking at being able to do civil fingerprinting uh, for certain types of uh, activities in town. And one of them was uh, prominently uh, featured in the newspaper for uh, massage parlors. Um, and the uh, police had found out that the state had more jurisdiction over that for licensing and inspections. Um, one of the things I did talk to the chief about is that maybe we can talk to both other chiefs as well as um, the uh, chairman of the uh, 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 public safety division at the state level to think about perhaps altering that language that would uh, allow not just the state inspection authority, but also local uh, authorities to our boards of health and our police department. So I'm looking to see uh, what ways we can maybe make it work the way we intended it to work from the beginning. But um, this is good news. It's taken a while for it to get through those processes, but I think um, you know we'll be able to come up with some uh, policy. Uh, this may also affect license holders as well, including alcohol um, license holders. So uh, I look forward to uh, what legal counsel and the chief put together. Uh, the next item is just to uh, let you know that our fall 2020 uh, special town meeting articles have been approved by the attorney general's office. 
Um, as you know, there were um, approval and comments on articles 11 and 16 of our warrant. Uh, the notice from the attorney general has been forwarded to our legal counsel at this point in time for further review of article 11 and when, in terms of um, when the prohibition of gas and diesel powered motorized boats on um, Robinson Pond um, can be implemented. And as soon as we get some feedback from them, I'll be sharing that with the board as well, as well as the um, Conservation Commission. Um, excise tax bills, um, you know that they're out because people are lining up to come in to pay for them. Uh, individuals are encouraged to pay online whenever possible, um, but they can also drop their payments right in our drop boxes on the front of the building and in the back. And um, we also have extended uh, the coverage um, at our customer service window to accommodate the increase for payments over the next several weeks. So we did do that um, to make sure that people uh, aren't waiting in the cold for a long period of time and or get disappointed when they come up to pay. So we did do that. Uh, the next item is just to let you know that um, in terms of the community compact um, up grant update, as you know, we were awarded uh, two compacts related to our financial planning and policies. Uh, and we um, have been working with the Collins Center uh, in terms of drafting internal policies and procedures, as well of as well as a um, GFOA award eligible budget document. Um, COVID had set some of that back, but we're on track now. Um, I do know that our final drafts of the policies and procedures um, have been sent to the Collins Center and they will produce uh, that um, in a uh, you know, graphic uh, design form. And we also have met with a new graphic designer uh, for the, um, the uh, uh, GFOA uh, budget document, which actually will be completed after town meeting because the budget document itself that goes for review, and this would be reviewed by finance directors across the country, um, to show that um, we have taken the steps for creating, um, you know, a worthy budget document that um, could be receiving, uh, hopefully, recognition uh, for improvements. Um, obviously, the whole reason behind both of these is to create budget transparency and also um, to outline the processes and procedures that, that make it um, good for fiscal um, transparency and improvements to the standards that we put in place for budget making. Um, board of Health Fees. I just wanted to uh, alert the board that, uh, as you know, we've taken on a new, especially Title V inspector. And one of the things that in reviewing the budgets um, coming from or the payments going out is that um, the Board of Health Fees needed to be adjusted to make sure we were covering our costs for that. And so more recently, the Board of Health did vote to increase um, septic uh, related fees. And again, that was to make sure that the, the actual um, inspections uh, were being paid for adequately um, by those people who were needing those kinds of inspections and that that's, the town wouldn't be losing money. They had not been adjusted in like forever. So it was a time to do it and the Board of Health um, understood that and they made that on February 1st, uh, 2021. Um, since we were talking about COVID earlier, I just wanted to let the uh, townspeople and, and the board know that as of today, we have had a total of 948 active cases, and um, we have a total uh, this week, and I'm breathing a little sigh of relief, where our numbers are coming down for active cases. We are down to 55 active cases, and that's um, you know the first time we've broke um, in a downward trend below 100, so that's great news. And um, But on the bad news side, we've had an, uh, at least several more deaths since I last met with the board. We have a total of 17 COVID-related deaths that our office and the um, town clerk's office has been notified. That has been due to the pandemic, um, and we feel very badly about that. Uh, Human Resource Benefits Guide, I just wanted to say as part of our ongoing efforts to professionalize the Human Resource Department, um, our human resource specialist, Joanne Frederick, has worked um, very hard to developing a new benefits guide. Um, the benefits guide will really help employees across all spectrums, both in the municipal side and the school side, in uh, making determinations relative um, to the benefit selection and understanding the available offerings that the town has. And so um, this is trying to put a sort of a one-stop shopping instead of having a bunch of different um, types of um, documents uh, that the people have to pour through. It will be, um, you know, something that they can access online. 
um, and the like. Um, so I want to say thank you to Joanne for putting that together. And um, I'm sure it will enhance the experience that we have for employees to, to make the best decisions with the information all in one document. Uh, the other thing was, since we were talking about civil fingerprinting, now we're going to talk about civil service, the annual report of 2021. Uh, the Board of Selectmen Office has uh, actually submitted the annual civil service report um, to the Massachusetts Civil Service Unit. You can see that in your packets, um, and a copy of that redacted report has been included there. And just finally, I wanted to let the board know that I, on February 4th, both the library director, Brittany McDougall, and myself had appeared before the Massachusetts Board of Library Commission is um, uh, asking or to be granted a waiver uh, for this fiscal year 21 budget reduction that occurred. Um, as you know, because of the pandemic, um, we were not alone as a municipality to have to make budget reductions uh, in not understanding where our fiscal picture was going. Um, the board uh, was aware of the reduction and uh, we needed to present about the, uh, the fact that uh, we had uh, given explanations of why this happened and also uh, where we were going in the future. And one of the things um, that um, I had implored to the commissioners is that we believe this is an isolated year uh, for this. Um, we've been very good to our libraries. We talked about the grants, my office, and um, uh, that has been very instrumental in the infrastructure and that we anticipate that this budget reduction will in fact change going into fiscal 22. And, um, and it seemed to appease all of their concerns. They were very happy to hear about the ongoing support that the town does provide to the library and plans to do that. But I just wanted to make you aware of that um, aspect as well, because they do get a, a state appropriation from them. It's called the municipal, municipal appropriation from the library commissioners. And, um, you know, and it is important. It's not their whole budget. We pay the predominant amount of that, but it's their way of regulating to make sure that uh, communities, you know, meet the needs of the, of, of the community. One of the things I did emphasize, and so did Brittany, is the fact that we have worked collaboratively um, in that the library, even though it's still not open completely um, to the public, that the goal is um, they're developing programming to see how they can roll that out. Um, but for now, um, that seemed to be sufficiently um, explained to the commission. I expect in March that we will hear that we will get a granted waiver, and then hopefully we won't have to worry about this again. And the pandemic will just keep moving in the right direction. So with that, that concludes my uh, report for this evening, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you very much. Um, we go to Selectman's request and we start out with Selectman Triano. I will be quick tonight. I just have um, two quick questions. Um, could we put on our agenda for the next meeting um, to discuss the po Selectman's policy regarding um, not meeting on the Tuesday after a holiday? Um, Cheryl and I had bounced back and forth in the subcommittee that we might be ready to talk about that as a board. So if we could potentially put that on the next agenda, that would be great. No and problem. Thank you. And I just wanted to also follow up on the correspondence that we had gotten about the cultivation business. Um, I had seen that it was the potential for them to come at our second February meeting, but I know we don't have a second February meeting because of the way the calendar falls. Are they scheduled for the beginning of March or are we pushing them back because of budget conversations? Um, I just figured it would be better to ask here for clarity for everybody. Um, I think I spelled that out in the um, memorandum that I did not believe that they were quite ready. Um, and there are some um, informational resources we've asked for. And, um, and I know our director for um, planning and economic development is pursuing that. Um, I think that the chairman recognizes that as soon as we have some of that information in front of us, um, I think that will allow the board to make the best decision going forward. I would not want you to have not have that information and then have them come back to the board. So I believe that um, we have that um, as well as waiting for our legal counsel to weigh in um, about a particular court case, which could also transform the way that you, um, you know, enter into a host negotiation with them. But, you know, I don't believe it will be a long period of time, but, you know, I, I certainly um, 
I'm not going to say when exactly yet because I don't have that information in my hand. Okay, because I can, I'm trying to pull up the memo here. Um, and just yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think it's not wise. Yeah. It's not on the agenda. That's, you know, if, it, if we put it on the agenda, then we can talk about it. Uh, just I just, I just wanted to clarify, though, because you're saying that I misread your memo. And I believe that your memo said that you believed that it would be ready by our second meeting in February to have the conversation. As we see, this yeah, is one of the reasons. February, I was going to ask if we could have them at our first meeting in March. No, we will not because um, we're waiting for information, Megan, and we really shouldn't be talking about this because it's not part of the agenda. So it will be coming up as soon as we get the info. But isn't that the purpose of selectmen's requests to ask about things? I'm not yes. vote. So you're and, and I'm telling you, and I'm telling you that we are not going to have it on our next agenda. And as soon as we get the information we requested, we will put it on the agenda. Okay. Um, when I find memo, I'll be sure to send it out to everybody to highlight that she did say that. Please do that. Please do that, Megan. Yes. We know that's important. And all that's right. all that I have for this evening. And I just wanted Great. to keep you up faith in the storm that we're going to have this week. All right. Select one LeBlanc. Uh, good evening. So, um, uh, so, um, Dennis, for our next meeting, if I could, um, I've had a request from a town, uh, from a resident to see if the Board of Selectmen would proclaim um, April to be Parkinson's Awareness Month. And um, maybe if we can put that on the next agenda so we can discuss it, that would be super. That will happen next week. No problem. Uh, next meeting, yes. Okay, great. Um, and I also just wanted to share, uh, I sat on the uh, meeting today for the Cecilia Smolensky Fund, and there is going to be a, um, uh, and, uh, we're going to try to do a better outreach on it for um, other entities within the town to uh, take advantage of that. Um, a lot of people probably don't realize that it funds an awful lot of like the the uh, ROTC and stuff like that. So um, just maybe again, we can put that on an agenda as we get closer to it. So we can talk a little bit more about it. Um, but just wanted to let um, the board know that I did sit on that meeting today. It was a great meeting. And my last item, um, again, maybe we can put this for an agenda item. I just wanted to get an update um, on the construction on the library. I haven't seen any trucks there lately. I'm assuming that it's done, but I was just wanted to just follow up on that, that and see how we ended up with it. And that was it. Sure. We will do that, Cheryl. Thank you, sir. No, thank you. Um, the only thing I have is I just want to, hearing all the the uh, good things about what the senior center is doing and our health department to get people uh, the vaccine. Um, I And at the same time, I, I wouldn't want to not commend the fire department and police department for all their work they're doing under these circumstances for COVID. So I just wanted to give them a big thank you again from this selectman uh, for all their hard work uh, dedication and um, it's not easy. It's, it's still not. It's still not over with. Uh, even though people are being vaccinated, people need to stay safe. Um, and I wish everybody all the luck with their uh, vaccination uh, chances. And that's all I have. So, having no other concerns, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chair, before I make that motion to adjourn, um, I did just want to let other board members know that the statement that I was referencing, that I was told that I was incorrect, that is in black and white in the memo dated on February 11th. Just so you know, that says that she believes that 
I believe that there are enough additional specifics for the board to consider for informational purposes at the second. Okay, again, you made your point, okay? You well, pointed um, out that the town manager is wrong. No, it's not. She told it's me not. that I was incorrect and I was clarifying. Right. So you're clarifying that you are my correct. My okay. point is clarified. I will it's make the it's motion. It's a female thing that we got to we gotta make sure we're right. So you are right, yes. Let's enter. Let's uh, entertain. Let's uh, get a motion to adjourn. If you weren't trying to talk over me, sir, I did make the motion. No, you said before you make the motion is what you said. Before I make the motion, hey. I want the. All board right, to all right, talk. all right. Enough, enough. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. I'll call for a vote. Yes. Yes. And I'll vote yes. Three in affirmative, two absent. We are adjourned. Thank you.